I started doing web design in the mid-1990s, and right away I started looking for tools. And when Dreamweaver started emerging just a little bit later than that, I was so excited to have a program that would save me writing all of that code by hand. So I started using Dreamweaver before 1.0, when it first emerged on the scene. And I was kind of fortunate and maybe a little prescient that I realized Dreamweaver was probably going to win the game. There were about a dozen different tools that people were playing around with there, and Dreamweaver just seemed to make more sense and handle web design better than the others. So I was pretty lucky to get an early start. I'm really excited about the newest version of Dreamweaver because it really starts to focus on mobile web design. And if you know some of my other books, Mobile Web Design for Dummies, I'm thinking a lot about designing for the little tiny screens and the big giant screens. And these days you really have to create websites that look good on somebody's giant plasma television and still work on a little tiny mobile device. And Dreamweaver gets that. And most of the new features in the latest version are about helping you design not just websites but even applications for tablets, for mobile phones, and other devices while still creating really good websites for all the other size screens out there you have to manage. Like a lot of people, I usually start in a program like Photoshop or Fireworks, get the design the way I want it, get the images the way I want it, and then transition that into Dreamweaver where I turn it into HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all the other code. So that workflow and that tool set that Adobe's Creative Suite has from Photoshop or Fireworks, whichever of those tools you prefer, into Dreamweaver and then ultimately to the web is very much the practice I, I preach and use. First of all, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. So many people start into Dreamweaver and they're afraid that if they push the wrong button they're going to break something or if they start into a web page and things aren't working they have to fix it. Let all of that go. Just the first website you should do, I like to call the sandbox. I set up a little website called the sandbox and it's just a place to play. Just open up Dreamweaver, go through some of the samples in my books. There's wonderful things you can download from my website to play with and templates. Just start experimenting. And that first version is probably something you should throw away when you're done. Just let that be a place to play, learn a few tricks, get more comfortable with the program, and then once you've done that, you can step back and start working on your own website with a lot more confidence. But don't be afraid to make mistakes. HTML5 really represents the culmination of this evolution toward being able to do almost anything you want on the web. And in fairness to HTML5, you should add to that CSS3, the latest version of cascading style sheets, because that's really the part that lets you add fonts. You can embed any font you want now and use that font in your web page as regular text, but have it appear in browsers and the way you want it to look. You can have a lot more control over things like gradients and just many design features, drop shadows, that designers have craved for years and we've had to do with images in the past, which is not the most efficient way to build or maintain websites. So HTML5 and CSS3 are letting us create websites in the way we really should have been able to create them all along. And it's long overdue. There's a little bit of caution about HTML5 because it's not yet approved by the W3C. That should change in the next year or two, but most of us are not waiting for that. The browsers are not waiting for that. You can already design sites for Chrome, even Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Safari with these latest technologies. So there are a few things you have to do to make sure you're using the right code for all those browsers. And the latest version of Dreamweaver is actually optimized to help you create all of the different code you need to design today for the future. Lots of people come to me thinking they have to be really technically savvy to create websites. And one of the great things about Dreamweaver, and really part of the evolution of the web, is that today there are so many ways to create websites that don't require deep technical skills, that don't require heavy duty programming. And Dreamweaver really facilitates that, makes it easier. So I like to tell people the most important thing in web design is just being interested in telling your story and open to learning new things as you do it.